It is such a pleasure to be back with you again today. Uh, for those of you that don't remember me, I'm Daniel Gaines. I'm one of the I'm the coordinator for Tanzania Missions, and uh, you all have been longtime supporters of various aspects of the work over there. Um, and I've had the opportunity to come here a, a few times and and talk to you, but today is is very different uh, because this time I brought some. Uh, esteemed colleagues and dear friends of mine with me from Tanzania. Uh, we have, I have with me today Ahimadiwe Kamaro uh, over here and Charles Mwanga. And these men are the uh, co directors of the Andrew Connolly School of Preaching there in Arusha, Tanzania. Uh, they are absolutely invaluable to. Uh, me personally, to the, the work that is, is going on there. We're in constant contact with uh, one another, and I'm excited that they can be here uh, today. The, since they've been here in uh, America on this visit, you know, we haven't let them rest much at all. Matter of fact, we drove through the night last night, so you know they, they, haven't, they did get a nap this afternoon, but um, we've been keeping them busy. And the purpose of this visit, a lot of times when I'm coming, I'm uh, presenting updates on the work. I'm asking, uh, I'm letting you know about some needs that the work may have and, and that sort of thing. Today, we don't intend to ask for anything at all. The purpose here is just tell you thank you. I want them to meet some of our favorite supporters. I want to give you the opportunity to see uh, the faces of men that you have been helping to change uh, their lives. Uh, you've been working in close uh, relationship with them, whether you, you realized it or, or not. Uh, they facilitate so much of what we're able to do. We love them so very much. Um, and they love you. We love this congregation. And so we brought with us a, uh, a token of appreciation that we wanted to uh, present to the congregation. It's a painting that was done in uh, Umtuwaumbu, uh, Tanzania, and it's been signed by the uh, members of, of the faculty at the School of Preaching. So I'll leave this here with you, and you can uh, hang it, do whatever you want to uh, with that, but just you look at it and know that there are people in Tanzania that love you and appreciate you uh, very much. I'll just maybe lay it on this thing over here. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say uh, tonight. And Charles uh, Monga is going to uh, bring the lesson uh, for us. And so without taking up any more of his time, uh, Brother Charles. Good evening. It is my pleasure to stand before you this evening. And uh, I'm really thankful for both God and the church here for many things that have been done and many souls that will be in heaven one day because there are people who chose to be Christians. So thank you so much. We are going to begin our lesson from the book of Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the church that has helped him, and he is remembering some things, and one of these things is saying thank you. And that's why we are here to tell you thank you. Uh, I know that words cannot express feelings, so there are words that we don't have words to explain those words because some of the things are feelings. We can't express how much we feel, but rather we can only say thank you. So Paul is writing this letter to this church in Philippi, starting from verse 3 through 6, saying, I thank God upon, my, upon every remembrance of you, always in prayers of mine making requests for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he has begun a good work in you, will compete, compete it, complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So there are many things that Paul is mentioning here, that these brothers have been with him, and that's why he is remembering. We have remembered the goodness that you have done. That's why we came all that way to tell you thank you. Thank you so much for the church here and, uh, and all that it has been doing. Through your help and through your support, we have been uh, able to have a school of preaching. 
Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 the Bible says these words Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 the Bible is saying that he, and the things that we have heard from me among many witnesses commit these things to the faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So the school of preaching is there to train men, faithful men from faithful churches. We don't just train anyone from anywhere. Faithful men from faithful churches, we, they come there for two years and we are committing them the teaching, the doctrine of Christ so that once they go out, they can be able to teach others also. Through that, we have been able to have master's class, undergraduate class, now leadership class. All this is possible because the church here has chose to support this good cause of Jesus Christ. Remember in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2 verse 10, as Jesus was being born, the angel is coming, and he is saying these things. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of joy, which will be to all people. Jesus came for all people. That's why he is sending everyone who claim to believe him, that he should go out. Yes, we are training these guys to go out. And they have to be, to be taught the right doctrine, the right teachings according to what Jesus has said. Good news are only good news when they have not been mixed with anything. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 through 9. Paul is urging Christians that, uh, at Galatia that they should not teach any other gospel apart from that one which they have received from him. And he is continuing by saying, even if he comes back and teach a different thing apart from what he taught. Let him also be cast. So these faithful men who are going out are fully trained for two years. So we thank you so much. This could have not been possible because we are housing, we are feeding them there for two years. We give them traveling money. All this is because of the church here supporting this work, the church as a whole. So thank you, thank you so much. They can't hear the good news if nobody has been sent. Paul is saying this in Romans chapter 10. How can they hear without a preacher? So thank you so much for supporting the school of preaching. But within this work, as we are, we are, we are training these preachers, we thank you also for being sending groups that you are coming there to evangelize and fulfill what the Lord is saying here in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, the Bible says, verse 15, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. People from this congregation have been coming there for years. It is, it is possible for you to think that they are just coming there. It is possible for you to, to think that is, since they go to these uh, game reserve areas, they are only going there to enjoy. One day someone will be in heaven just because one of you came. Just because one of you have decided to fulfill this, what Jesus is saying, because this is the main purpose or main goal of this work. Not only to have preacher training school, but also to evangelize. So both the school and the, those guys who are coming from outside, we go out day to day doing campaigns, doing evangelism, and bringing men to Christ. Let me give you this example. Somewhere around 1990 something, somebody, a young man, went to Africa. And I, I, I met with one old lady in Texas back then. And she told me that he, that guy went for a hunting. That was his purpose to go there at the beginning. He went to hunt, and as he was hunting, then he fell in love with people. So he started teaching them the gospel. Years later, that guy brought his friend. And his friend was not well trained. But since these are people who know their, their responsibility to God, 
he, the friend went to school of preaching and decided to move back to live there. Because it was the year 2000 and, uh, 1999 to 2000. That friend came. Since that time, till now, we have more than 300 congregations. We have more than 256 uh, graduates from DC, DC college. Just because one guy went and he decided to open his mouth. That guy was Andrew Connolly. Later on, he brought his high stuff for the whom I think most of you know. And uh, here we are. If it could have not been you sending people there, I could have not even become a Christian. Because through these missionaries, through these people who are coming and do evangelism there, many of us have been brought to Jesus. They are all gone. Sai has died and Andrew Connell has died. Uh, I've seen some old faces here, some of the friends that I've seen. They have been uh, working and doing this uh, almost, uh, almost 20 years now. And I will die one day. But I know so far we have trained people who are faithful and people who can be able to commit these things to others, more than 250. It was not possible if the Lord was not using you as the church in general. But I would like to ask individuals, what have you done? Because the church can do things, mighty things, as the church in general. But what have I done? Do I have anything that I will show the Lord one day? That with those things that have been spoken, with the number given, I think I've used my resources, I've used my time, and I'm not talking only about you coming to the mission in, only in Tanzania. He says here, go unto all the world. And that world may be outside here. Have you gone? Do people know that you follow Christ? So people cannot be saved if we, we don't send. That's why I said the second thing that we are interested in much is evangelism. Many Bible studies are being conducted every day. Many people are coming. Yes, they will get to enjoy seeing the beauty of the country. But after they have worked very hard when being tired. Because the days goes by very quick when people are there. So we thank you so much. But also we thank you for being helping Christians there. You know we are coming from a poor, poor, poor country. A third world country. And my brother, Himidiwe, he, this is his first time here. And he is confused with everything. He said, man, these things, uh, people are having this and that. Because where we come, we have very limited resources. And there are some brothers, oh, the church here has been sending aid. Whenever we had flood, people were helped with this church here. Whenever we have drought, people were helped. And uh, there are families in the churches which have been uh, supported by several people here. So we are here to say thank you. God bless you with all that you are doing. And as, you, as we continue, not only keeping these things, or giving these things to the faithful people so that they can give to others, we teach around seminars. A lot of seminars they are going around. I was talking to my brother Rod and I'm asking him, well, you are lost, where are you? Because he is one of those people who used to go around and do everything. And several others I can see here. Thank you. Your labor is not in vain in Christ Jesus. You remember King Ezekiah one time he was very sick. And him being very sick he knew that he's going to die. And then he cried to God. Reminding God of the good things that he, he has done. And it was added unto him 15 more years. What do you have that you can show God? What do you have that you can remind God as an individual? The church in general has been doing a very great job. But we as individuals, what can we show uh, to God? Because people have to obey. They can't hear without us. The gospel has to be obeyed for people to be saved. 
First Peter chapter 4, the Bible says this word. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For the judgment has come. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who did not obey God? The gospel of God. You know, if we could have not been doing what we are doing, there will be a lot of souls out there going to hell. Because when Jesus returns, he is not going to deal with the outside. He's going to deal with us here. Separate sheep and goat from here. Those sheep are not from outside, from here. And if that judgment will be that strict, we know we have relatives, we have friends, we have neighbors who have not heard, just because we have not opened our mouth probably, or just because we have not lived rightly before them, what will be their end? So I'm beseeching you, brothers and sisters, as you look around to your friends, your neighbors, your family, they will not hear Jesus. They will not be able to stand the judgment to come if we don't open up our mouth, if we don't live right when we are around them, if we don't show them the Christianity and how. Because Christianity is life. It's not about talking. It's the way we conduct ourselves. It's the way we live among people. It's the way we we'll shine so that people seize our good deeds and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. How have you been living? How have you been preaching this gospel? The church in general has been doing very mighty work. What as you, as you as an individual have done? Because the judgment is, is, is for certain. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. The Bible is very open. That judgment is coming. Where will those be people be? People whom you have the ability to tell. People who they will one day tell God, he didn't say it. I didn't hear. We know there is no excuse, but he, let it not be that he excuses me. Oh, it is you. So this evening, I would just want to say thank you. Thank you again for the church here, for the partnership that he, it had, or she had with us for all those years. And we are praying that the work that God has begun in us may continue. May the Lord bless us all. Anybody that uh, needs to respond to the uh, the gospel call today, maybe you're ready to. If somebody has reached out to you right here in the the mission field that is Elk City, Oklahoma, and uh, study with you, and you're ready to be baptized. There's no better time than now. Maybe you've already been baptized, but there's been some hiccup, some struggle in your uh, Christian journey, and you need to get back on track. Maybe you need. Uh, prayers or you need to repent publicly uh, to ask for forgiveness or to ask for uh, prayers of uh, encouragement from your brethren, now is a good time for that also. So if you'd like to respond to the invitation, please come forward and let your need be known. While together we stand and sing.